Hey guys, welcome to a FIFA 15 squad builder, and today we're going to actually do a Derby County team, which I think we'll be using for this season. It's it's not really anything to do with FIFA; it's more in real life. So, if you're looking for a proper squad builder, then probably go somewhere else on my channel because there are plenty. So let's get into the formation. I think we will be using the 4-2-3-1, and um, the reason is it probably fits the players that we do have. So, in goal, I think it's kind of obvious. Now, at the start of the season, it was a bit debatable, but I think by now, Scott Carson is the number one choice by a country mile. What Grant did in the Cup, he's going to do... I don't know, I don't think he's ever really going to get back into the first team lineup. Maybe if Carson gets injured, and then he shows a bit of good form, we'll have to see. But it is a bit of a shame, because obviously Grant's been a long-time servant at the club, and um, it's a bit of a shame Carson's taken him out the number one spot. But at the same time, if Carson's a better goalkeeper, then you're going to have to go for him. Next up in the defence, we're going to go for last year's captain, Richard Keogh and I think without being the captain he's got a lot less pressure on him and he can just play his game he can play as well as he can and not worry about the rest of the team and um, yeah I think the combination of the two centre backs which uh, will be Shackle and Keogh I think that's the best option we do have maybe if one of them I don't know I don't think Shackle will be dropped but maybe Keogh if he has a bit of bad form Pierce or Shot and maybe coming into the first team lineup but I think for the time being, we're going to keep with this triangle at the back. I think that is one of the most undebatable things. These three at the back will be the first team choice, and um, there's not much really debating about that. Next up in the team, we do have Craig Forsyth, and I kind of did want Warnock to come into the team and do like really well defensively, but I wouldn't say he is that much better defensively, so I probably would pick Forsyth just because he's good at going forwards, and obviously with us playing probably bad at right back, you kind of need Forsyth because... When you've got two defensive fullbacks, you've got no support going up and down the pitch. I think in the first game of the season, we played Warnock and Baird. Good experience, it kept us a clean sheet, but I think if we had four sides, we could have potentially got a goal in that game. So, yeah, Baird going into the right-back position, I think he's a good captain for the side. He's got a lot of experience, and um, the thing is with the fullbacks, you can do it one or two ways. You can have one defensive right-back and then a non-defensive left-back. So, for example, I've got Sesewan Cambo and Warnock, that could be an option for the cup and then in the first team league matches I reckon Forsyth and Baird at the fullback positions probably will be our best option. I kind of wish that we did improve the left back position this window maybe signing in someone and um, getting rid of Forsyth because you could have probably sold him for a million because he's a very very good attacking fullback in the team. Next up in the midfield we've got George Thorne as we have made very many signings in the centre mid position I think Thorne is a 100% starter if he's fit because when he plays compared to when he's not playing it's ridiculous it's it's absolutely incredible how much of a difference this guy does make to the team and obviously is going into the first team lineup and the guy next to him that's the one that I'm really not sure who it's going to be for the time being I'm gonna say we're probably going to start with Kendrick and then maybe put Butterfield in so let's put Butterfield in here for the time being and um, yeah I think it's a nice uh, signing for the club obviously Hugh's been out injured till February March time we're going to need another centre mid, maybe Johnson as well, maybe that's a little bit overkill, but Johnson is a very good player. In the league, maybe we shouldn't have got Butterfield, but you got to think, if we get injuries, then maybe we should have got Butterfield. So, it's better to have the depth and get the quality, and um, just the competition in that midfield position is going to be really, really competitive, because obviously you got Brighton as well. So, let's go into the centre attacking mid position, basically... An attacking centre mid it's going to be Bradley in my opinion because he played this position kind of at uh, Norwich and I think he'll do very nicely in the team in that position with his really good shooting you could always play him at the CDM spot with Thorne and um, then play maybe Wyman at centre forward but I don't know I, I really don't know what he's going to do he may play the diamond again and um, maybe drop in maybe that'll be an option having Russell and Ince as the wide options and then having Johnson Hendrick, Bryson, Butterfield and Thorne as the centre mid people. So it's really, really difficult. You really don't know until um, after the international break. We'll have to see what formation he does pick. So in the right mid position, we're going to go for Thomas Ince. And you really can't not play him because he's paid 4.75 million for him. And he's got a lot of potential. Obviously, he's got a bit of a slow start. He hasn't had the best of starts, but loads of players have that and then have fantastic seasons all round. Next up in the team. We do actually have Johnny Russell. You cannot not have Johnny Russell in the team. He's such a hard-working player. Medium, medium work rates doesn't tell the story at all. It should be high, high. Always going up and down this left-hand side of the pitch. And um, he's just a really nice player. You really can't 
not have Johnny Russell in the Derby County team. He's probably worth around 5 million with the amount of uh, stuff that he does for the team. And he's he's looking on potentially getting some good goals this season. And the final player in the first team lineup, I think, is going to be Chris Martin. You really, I don't know, Darren Bent's a bit more of an impact player. He's getting towards the end of his career. Martin, he's only 26 now, I think. He's got a few more, lit, at least four or five a very good football and uh, Darren Bent he'll he'll bring a quality off the bench that um, Chris Martin really doesn't have so here's one of the options we could put Wyman in behind uh, Martin and then Johnson at CDM that's always an option that could probably potentially improve the team I don't see Bent starting games I, I don't think he does that well from the start Martin just keeps us on the ball a lot more and um, keeps the possession obviously there's so many options in this team that's the problem when you're looking at the side you've got Darren Bent, uh, maybe you go to a two-striker formation, play Bent and Martin and uh, Wyman as the backup striker. I really, really don't know. So, looking at a few more players, Pierce, he didn't do that well against Portsmouth. I don't see him really playing that many games. Obviously, when Hughes comes back, he's going straight back into that position. There's no doubt about that, but that's for another six, uh, seven months. So, there's no point in uh, considering him for the time being. Dawkins, you're probably just going to have him as a wide man. The problem is with um, Wyman. I see him a lot better down the middle. Out wide, he really hasn't performed that well, so it's a little bit of a shame. Obviously, we've got the option of potentially playing Wyman out wide and then uh, Thomas Ince in behind the striker, Johnson at CDM. There are so many options, and I really don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what lineup he does pick after the international break. And um, we obviously don't have the cup, so he can't really experience um, new formations in a way. He's, he's only used the 4 one 2 one 2 uh, bracket two, obviously with the centre mids, no wingers, and the four two three one, and the four three three. So I don't think he will be making a new formation out of the back of his head, like a four four two or something like that. I don't think he will do that. He will pick one of those three mo formations, and out of the three, we've probably played best with the four two three one when the likes of um, Thorne are playing in that CDM spot with uh, Hendrick, we do quite nicely. So. Yeah, I think that's going to be the team for this season. In terms of signings, we could potentially bring on maybe a lone left back. I'm not too sure who there really is. There's a few free agents I wouldn't mind bringing into the team. Joey Barton was one at the time, but obviously he's gone to Burnley now. Maybe we could have got him instead of Butterfield or something like that. But obviously Butterfield's going to be on a lot less wage. And um, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of options with this team. That's one of the options we could play. A diamond in midfield with um, Bryson and Hendrick as the legs. Maybe Butterfield and... Johnson in behind the striker, maybe Ince in behind the striker, Johnson, Bryson. There's so many centre mids, it's really difficult because they're all very, very good. And um, it's going to be interesting, that's for sure. There's not going to be an uninteresting game when you've got this many players competing at the high level. And um, I really do hope we do get promotion. Obviously, if we bring in a few lone players, that little bit of young spark, that could really help this team. So... If you enjoyed this video, it would be fantastic to see what your opinions are on uh, what formation you think we'll be playing, what players and stuff like that. If we could smash over 25 likes, subscribe if you're on the channel and see you soon. Bye.